this week's RV destinations. We join Jeff Johnston and repay a visit to the Tri-City area of Washington State as he shows us some of the interesting things to see and do in and around the area. Jeff also checks out the Columbia Sun RV Resort, a great place to stay when visiting this part of Washington State. Then, if your old EDPM rubber roof is looking a little worse for wear, Mark Polk from RV Education 101 shows us how you can restore that old roof in one day so it looks like new again using the Dicor rubber roof kit. With spring quickly upon us, Dr. Fitz gives us a refresher course on what to do should your dog get stung by a bee. In most cases, it's no problem, but occasionally a simple bee sting could cause some serious complications. Knowing what to do could be very important. Later, Yvonne Schmatter prepares some out-of-this-world delicious brand muffins in her RV kitchen. Besides being delicious, these muffins are so quick and easy to make, as you'll see. These stories and more on this week's RVing Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by GoPower. Today's quick stop is Washington's Tri-Cities, Kennewick, Pasco, and Richland. This area abounds in outdoor activities, history, and interesting things to see and do. The Convention and Visitor Bureau is, of course, the best place to gather information on local attractions. So the Tri-Cities is a wonderful place for RVers to come and visit, particularly if you're into outdoor adventure. So we're sitting at the confluence of the Snake and Columbia Rivers. The Yakima River comes into the Columbia here, so our waterways are rich. We have 23 miles worth of paved trail that goes around our community along the Columbia River. It's called the Sacagawea Heritage Trail. So whether you're a runner, or a walker, you like to ride bicycles, it's perfect. Great banks for fishing. If you want to get out in the river, you can rent paddle boards here and kayaks. Uh, good opportunity there. Jet skis as well. We even have a river boat. Um, you can get out on uh, water to wine cruises and enjoy a great meal and enjoy some, some wine. The, the RV spaces around our community, we have a number of different spaces. KOAs, for instance, we have state parks down along the Snake River. There's multiple places to park down there, camp and fire up a grill and enjoy it. And then here within the Tri-Cities proper, uh, we have some campgrounds with great amenities, everything from swimming to general stores uh, to playgrounds to, to nicely landscaped uh, areas. So I think there's probably a little bit of something in there for everyone to enjoy uh, and from the RV lens. All around this part of the country, you see boulders like this strewn all over the landscape, looking like they don't belong there. They're just sticking up out of the middle of nowhere. In fact, they're visitors. Back when the last glaciers covered this area and the last floods were shaping the, the basins up here, um, these guys came down with the, the glacier or the floods, hung around a little while, the glaciers went away, the floods disappeared, and these were deposited, and they're called erratics. This one, for example, is made out of granite, which is definitely not one of the local stones. He probably came from, uh, oh, somewhere up in Montana, I suppose. So this is just one of the interesting features that you can learn about here at the Reach Museum in Kennewick, Washington. Natural history, Native American, and industrial history are all specialties here at the Reach Museum. So the Reach Museum, uh, we've been open five years now, we're having our fifth anniversary this year. Um, it really tells the stories of uh, the Mid-Columbia Basin and all the stories that we tell here are tied together by the Columbia River itself. Hanford history is a big part of the story of the Tri-Cities area, and starting with World War II, uh, but going all the way up through the present as we talk about um, the Cold War and also the cleanup efforts at Hanford since the Cold War has ended. One of our galleries also gives a lot of information about the geologic past, all the way back to um, the lava flows uh, 17 million years ago, the, um, the history of the river, uh, which has been around for millions of years, the fossils you can find in the Ringgold Formation um, just across the river here at White Bluffs, and then also the, the peoples who have lived here for thousands and thousands of years, um, the plants and animals, uh, wildlife that you'll see here throughout the year, and then just the story of uh, the Hanford Reach, uh, the longest stretch of the Columbia River that's undammed, 
stretching from McNary Dam to Priest Rapids Dam, nearly 60 river miles. And the efforts that have been, um, that have gone on to help preserve that as a, a national monument. When you're ready to hunker down, there are top-notch campgrounds in the area, including Columbia Sun RV Resort. Uh, welcome to Columbia Sun RV Resort. We're uh, 145 sites on 25 acres. We have full hookups. We have 20, 30, and 50 amp at each site, um, water, sewer. 75 sites are pull-through. We have large sites, uh, very easy access for any rig, both large and small. We have a pool, outdoor pool and spa. We also have an outdoor uh, sports court and, and kids playground equipment. On the holidays like Memorial Day and 4th of July and Labor Day, we do uh, barbecues for all of our guests. Columbia Sun has something for every RVer here in the Tri-Cities, both large and small. When Bedford launched Aquacam, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, You'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. If you have an aging EPDM roof on your RV like this one, you won't want to miss this video. Your EPDM roof is exposed to harsh elements like the sun's damaging UV rays, rain, hail, snow, and wind blowing debris, which can lead to stains and other discoloration taking place on your roof. And when the roof membrane approaches that 10 to 12 year old mark, it has been through a lot. Replacing your EPDM roof can be labor intensive and expensive. In many cases, if your roof is sound and watertight, you don't need to replace it. However, you do want to get rid of those stains and discoloration. Today we're going to discuss how you can add years of life to an older EPDM roof membrane and restore it to that new look to your RV roof surface at an affordable price. The way we're going to do this is with Dicor's EPDM Roof Cleaner Activator and Dicor's Acrylic Roof Coating. Let's get started right now. Dicor's EPDM Roof Acrylic Coating is designed specifically for EPDM roofing material. Dicor's EPDM roof coating system can also be applied to TPO roofing. Caution: Be extremely careful when working on the roof of an RV. Dicor's EPDM roof acrylic coating is a two-part commercial grade system. The EPDM roof cleaner activator prepares the roof while the acrylic coating provides an excellent long-lasting protective barrier. Note. The entire project must be completed in one day, including cleaner activator application, rinsing, and two coats of acrylic coating, each dry to the touch. The first step is to secure plastic sheeting over the entire side walls and front and rear caps using tape to secure the plastic in place. This will protect these areas from the dirt and other material that will be removed from the roof while rinsing off the EPDM cleaner activator. Make sure the surface is dry before applying the tape. If the EPDM cleaner activator contacts any surface other than the roof or the items installed on the roof, it needs to be rinsed off immediately. Next, remove any heavy deposits of dirt, leaves, pine needles, and other debris using a broom or air blower. The EPDM cleaner activator can be applied directly over EPDM surfaces containing residual amounts of dirt, dust, and other contamination. 
Do not wash the roof prior to applying the EPDM cleaner activator. It can be applied using an agricultural type sprayer. Safety glasses with side shields and latex gloves are recommended when transferring the EPDM cleaner activator from the shipping container to the sprayer. Spray a coarse mist that leaves the roof damp. Adjust the spray for weather conditions as necessary. If the EPDM cleaner activator is running off the roof, you are using too much. Adjust the spray nozzle to achieve a uniform spray pattern. Allow the EPDM cleaner activator to stand a minimum of 15 minutes to wet out and react with the EPDM surface. Next, rinse the entire roof surface. For best results, use a minimum 2,000 PSI pressure washer. Using a 15-inch spray pattern, begin the power rinse at the lowest point on the roof and work upwards, keeping the pressure washer tip within 12 inches of the EPDM surface. Once the highest point on the roof is reached, work down again with the final rinse to remove any excess dirt or debris from the roof. If a power washer is unavailable, you can use a medium bristle brush, working smaller 3x3 three three foot areas at a time, and rinsing thoroughly to make sure the cleaner activator has been removed. The roof should be white in color, which is an indication that the surface has been chemically altered. It's important that all cleaner activator is completely removed from the roof prior to applying the acrylic coating. All surfaces must be clean and free of residue or loose particles, degraded substrate, grease, oil, dirt, or other contaminants. Surfaces must be completely dry and frost free before coating. Any sealant touch up should be done at least two weeks prior to the coating job. Dicor acrylic coating must be applied in a minimum of two coats at a rate of one gallon per 125 square foot per coat. Actual gallons required will depend on the type of surface and texture, method of application, and weather conditions at the time of application. Thoroughly mix the contents for a minimum of five minutes prior to application. Dicor acrylic coating can be applied by medium nap roller or brush. What works best for me is to go around all fixtures on the roof using a brush followed by a medium nap roller with a long handle. Allow the first coat to dry to the touch prior to applying the second coat. After applying the second coat, you should allow for a minimum of three hours of direct sunlight prior to nightfall. It takes 24 to 48 hours for the coating to completely dry and cure. Make sure no rain or heavy dew is allowed to come in contact with your newly coated roof during this time period. When a job is finished, you can clean the equipment with water and a biodegradable detergent. That's all there is to it. When you combine the cleaner activator with the acrylic coating, your rubber roof membrane not only looks new again, but you are extending the life of your RV roof. When you protect and maintain the RV roof, you protect the entire RV. If your RV has a different type of roofing material, take a minute to visit www.dicor.com to find a roof coating system designed specifically for your type of RV roof. Happy camping. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com.
Pause on Board is brought to you by Jones Natural Chews, American sourced and made in America. Welcome to RVing Today's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz. And this is Georgie. Did you know that dogs can be allergic to bee stings? I know. That's right. Just like with some people, some dogs can be extremely sensitive to bee stings. Dogs can either be stung by a bee somewhere on their body or be stung after they attempt to eat the bee. Most dogs will be mildly itchy and slightly sore in the location where they were stung. However, if your dog was stung, you should monitor them for about the next several hours to ensure that they do not have an allergic reaction. Dogs may develop swelling at the site of the sting. They may also develop hives, which in short-haired dogs look like small bumps under the skin. In long-haired dogs, you may be able to feel them when you pet your dog. Some pets will get extremely itchy as well. A small proportion of dogs will progress and have more severe reactions to a sting, including swelling of the face and neck, vomiting, diarrhea, and even difficulty breathing. These signs indicate a severe allergic reaction and your pet should be taken to a veterinarian immediately. Anaphylaxis, or an allergic reaction, in dogs is treated similarly to a reaction in people. If you're traveling or know that your dog is allergic to bee stings, what should you do to try to prevent a reaction? In a season one episode of Paws on Board, I outlined some items that you should have in a pet first aid kit. One of these items was Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine and can help to reduce the severity of allergic reactions. If your pet is stung by a bee while on the road or it starts to show some mild signs of a reaction such as itchiness, give them some Benadryl. This can help to prevent the reaction from getting worse or buy you some time so you can get your pet to a veterinarian for further treatment. Benadryl is in no way a replacement for veterinary care if your pet has severe allergic reactions. Prior to travel, contact your vet for the proper dosing of Benadryl for your dog. Several other insects that can cause skin reactions in dogs include mosquitoes and black flies. Most dogs have minimal reaction to mosquito bites, but some may become itchy or develop hives. If this occurs, again, it's always a good idea to have the Benadryl on hand. Black flies can be a seasonal problem in some parts of the country, and their bites can cause some pretty dramatic looking welts. Often, dogs will be brought into the clinic for these circular red spots that they have on their belly and groin that may or may not be itchy. Generally, these are caused by black flies that bite your dog from underneath. These spots will usually go away on their own, but if they don't, you can apply a thin layer of a triple antibiotic ointment to treat the mild skin infection. An important note, Occasionally, these black fly bites can appear target-like and may be confused with a tick bite. The classic target lesion of Lyme disease in people is actually rarely seen in dogs. Although the red spot you may see could be from a tick bite, the redness is usually due to irritation and a mild bacterial infection. But it's always a good idea to have your pet on tick prevention to reduce the likelihood of any diseases from ticks. Although there are preventative products on the market, many bug bites and stings are difficult to prevent. But as an owner, you can be prepared to deal with the possible reactions your dog might have and feel comfortable when you're on the road. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rvingtoday.tv. Want more RVing Today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Bedford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. There isn't anything better for breakfast than a fresh healthy bran muffin and a delicious cup of coffee. Not being much of a baker, I'd gotten into the habit of picking up a few muffins when I went grocery shopping. It got a little bit spendy, but I was comfortable knowing that I was eating healthy. 
Then one day my grocery store began posting nutritional information, including the calorie counts on the flavor labels. I've got to tell you, I was absolutely shocked to learn that my morning muffin had nearly one third of my entire day's calorie allowance. Wow, that is just not good. So with a little research, recipe testing and tweaking, I came up with my own simple and delicious version of my beloved morning brand muffins. These are filled with raisins, nuts, a natural sweetener, wholesome oat bran, and more deliciousness. But even better, they're fast to bake, so my muffins are now warm in the morning. Let me show you how easy these are to make. You'll be making them in no time. While it might seem like there are quite a few ingredients, you'll see how easy it is. Now, the way that we start these muffins is we've got two bowls, one for the dry ingredients and one for the wet ingredients. So first we'll mix up the dry ingredients. In this bowl, I have half a cup of whole wheat flour. To that, I'm gonna add half a cup of oat bran, right in like so. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt, now I'm going to add just a little bit of spice mix. This is cinnamon, flaxseed, lemon, uh, ginger, really delicious. I'm going to add a couple heaping, half a teaspoon. So that's almost a teaspoon. We're going to add some baking powder and that's going to give it just a little bit of lift. We're going to put one and one half teaspoons, two, three, perfect. Just like that and we're gonna mix everything around. That's it, our dry ingredients are done and ready to go. Now for our wet ingredients. I've got half a cup of non-fat milk in my bowl. I've got a quarter cup of grade B maple syrup. You can also use honey or agave, whatever your sweetener of choice is, just a nice natural sweetener, like so. I'm gonna put in some avocado oil, and I'm gonna put in one and one half tablespoons. Avocado oil is healthy for you, it's delicious, and if you're actually cooking with it, it has a really high smoke point, so I always have a bottle of avocado oil in my pantry. And one egg. The last wet ingredient we're gonna put in is some vanilla. I'll put about a tablespoon in just add some extra flavor. Mix that into our liquid. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the liquid into the dry ingredients. Really easy, I'm gonna just pour it right in, like so, and I'm gonna stir it around. You really just wanna stir it until all the dry ingredients are wet. If you stir it a lot, it gets a little bit tough. So just mix everything up just barely. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our walnuts and our raisins. I'm gonna use a spatula and I'm gonna just fold them in. And that's about it. Now we're gonna put our muffin batter into our muffin pans. Now if you have a loaf pan, you can certainly use that. I've done that in the past, but I picked up this little muffin pan. It's non-stick. I've put a little bit of oil in it just because I want to grease it. I want my muffins to come out nice when they're done cooking and it fits in my toaster oven. By the way, I've got my toaster oven right here preheating to about 375 degrees on convection. So what we want to do is we're going to put our muffin batter into our muffin pan. We're gonna fill it about two thirds of the way. Here we go, pretty simple. Before we put them in the oven, the last thing we're gonna do is just sprinkle a little bit of coconut sugar on the top of the muffins. It gives them just a nice, sticky, sort of sweet topping. Really easy and not a lot, just a little bit. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now we're ready to put our muffins into our toaster oven. We have it on 375 degrees, convection. These are gonna cook somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. So let's get them going. Well, that's all there is to it. Measure, mix, bake, and enjoy. I'm pleased to tell you that these have around 200-ish calories each, less than half of the store-bought muffins. Try this recipe at home, put your own spin on it by adding your favorite fruit, nuts, or even switch up the sweetener. 
That'll do it from this humble road abode. Thanks for visiting, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.